wild. All right, Dukes, you peeked your head in here. We got about 10, 11 minutes to, uh, to, to flush out some of this here. So you peeked your head in before we turned the mics on. You said, I got a little wolf steam. You talk to all kinds of people around the NBA. So you just, you just give us as much wolf steam as you, uh, as you're comfortable giving us. All right. Well, I mean, in no particular order, Trey Jones, Apple Valley's Trey Jones interviewed with the Wolves on Monday. Former Gopher Daniel Oturu interviewed on Tuesday. Some other draft prospects that have interviewed recently with the Wolves include Kira Lewis Jr., a really good guard from Alabama. Forward Paul Reed from DePaul. Jalen Smith, a good forward from Maryland. That was a really fun matchup back in the winter at the barn. Smith against Oturu. Oturu had a really good game that night, but Smith looks like that he would be a player that should be in that mix if they end up staying at pick 17. I would say maybe the the biggest headline from what I'm about to lay out would be what an agent told me the other day. So this agent represents a really good draft prospect. So I was I was texting some agents the other day just trying to figure out, okay, you know, have the Wolves interviewed this player, texted some people with the Wolves trying to figure out, oh, I'm just trying to do some draft homework, learning more about these prospects as November 18th fast approaches. So I reached out to this particular agent he represents a really good draft prospect. Now, the Wolves have not interviewed his client at least so far. Now, the Wolves will have an opportunity to interview as many guys as they want. That's the beauty of being in the position that they are with picks 1 and 17. You know, like, they want to interview Anthony Edwards. They haven't interviewed Anthony Edwards yet, but that will happen. Like, Anthony Edwards is willing to interview with the Wolves. There is appeal to going pick 1. So, anyway, unsolicited, this agent texted back. So, he told me, no, my, my client has, has not interviewed yet with the Wolves. He goes, how about this? He goes, so I'm, I'm in Southern California the other day. I run into somebody that knows Carl Anthony Towns incredibly well. Let's just say a really good player that knows Cat really, really well. He goes, this player told me, this is a player I've known for a long time. This is the agent talking. The agent said, this player told him that Cat is as good as gone. Now, I bring that up not to suggest that that's happening anytime soon. The Wolves are not trading Carl Anthony Towns. Speculation. I don't even know if it's that reckless, Phil. I mean, I, I really don't. Listen, I think we, if, we, if, we only have one version of the sound. I know, but I just think if 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 you reached out to 15 or 20 NBA front office executives, I think a lot of people would tell you that that this thing eventually will trend toward what took place with Anthony Davis in New Orleans, that they won't be able to figure it out here especially everything going on in Cat's personal life. Maybe eventually he wants to he wants to just, you know, start clean somewhere else. Now, the Wolves have, have tried to do everything in their power to satisfy him, to empower him. They make the D'Angelo Russell trade, a trade for one of his best friends. You know, they've done other things behind the scenes to, to lay out the red carpet for him. And it's not to that point. Like, let me make that very clear. Carl Anthony Towns is not demanding a trade anytime soon. I can just tell you, though, that that shattered. The reason I bring it up, because it's a talker. That's what we do here on, on the podcast, right? We bring up different talking points, stuff that we're hearing, whether it happens or not, you know, to be determined, but but certainly the chatter is out there. So I'm bringing that to the listening audience, that that, that chatter still remains. I think it originated going back probably six, seven months. Like, I don't think this is the first time somebody has volunteered that it eventually gets to the point of, of Carl Anthony Towns looking to get traded. But I'm just telling you that that chatter is absolutely out there, including people very close mm. to Carl Anthony Towns. Okay. Put it this way. I just think, how about this? This draft is as big as, as a draft as, as I can remember in Wolves history when talking about the 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 trajectory of, of the Wolves over the next few years. I just think this offseason, the draft, you know, potential trade targets, you know, they do have the mid-level exception. Can they recruit a pretty good free agent for that? Can they turn the corner whenever next season starts? Probably January or February. Like, can they make a dent in the Western Conference next year? I just think if they don't, like this time next year, I think that's when the chatter would really pick up. Nothing is happening for the next year, but I just think if the Wolves go south next year after this really important offseason, then I think the chatter gets louder. Dukes, do the, do the Timberwolves view Carl Anthony Towns as the building block? They do. Yeah, they do. Yeah, they feel like with with him that that they can make a significant run. Now, they realize, especially watching the playoffs unfold here, that you need really good guard play, right? Like, Denver is able to win with a big man, Jokic, as their best player. But Jamal Murray, before our eyes, is turning into a really good 1B, right? If, if Jokic is 1A, Murray is turning into a cusp superstar 
before our eyes. So you need that really good guard. But yeah, they feel like with D'Angelo, you know, do you end up taking LaMelo Ball or Anthony Edwards? They have a chance to strike gold with that number one pick. Maybe eventually they use whoever they pick in a trade somewhere down the line, maybe for a Bradley Beal or a Ben Simmons. But they can bring in another dynamic wing or guard. But they do feel like, especially looking at Denver, that you can win at a high level with a seven-footer as your best player. Duke's a 